Today we're going to walk through how to install and set up the RTX GI plugin for Unreal Engine 5. As you can see, as of today, we're in Unreal 5 preview mode. Some of these details might change a little bit, but it should generally be the same as what you're seeing today. In order to get the plugin, first thing you want to do is go to the marketplace and you can search for products here. Uh, you can, of course, search for RTX GI uh, or NVIDIA or anything like that, but actually just even simpler, you can just search for RTX and it will come up here in the list. Click here for the external link and it should take you directly to the Unreal Engine plugin. So after agreeing to the terms of service, you'll get some download links for 427 and for Unreal 5. Now you'll want to unzip the downloaded plugin and go into that folder and in there you'll notice uh, we have uh, some PDF instructions which are very helpful to read through and I, I suggest you do that before proceeding too deeply into the plugin itself because there are uh, useful nuggets in here and we also have a samples project you'll want to take the RTX GI folder and bring it into your uh, Unreal 5 engine plugins marketplace folder. So once you've done that, a good way to make sure everything is working uh, w with the plugin installed is uh, go back to that sample project, RTX GI test, and double click it. So now that the sample is loaded up, we can see uh, just right off the bat RTX GI is working. If uh, it says here, play an editor to see the sunlight animating and dynamic GI updating accordingly. So if I push the play and editor button, um, we get to see that working in real time. If you need to enable the plugin for a different project, you would want to go to edit plugins. And from here, you can just search for NVIDIA. Uh, click here to enable the plugin and then you know, restart uh, when it prompts you to. Now in Unreal Engine 4, uh, you might remember that RTX GI was enabled via a console command. In Unreal Engine 5, it's a little bit different. Uh, what you'll want to do is uh, go to your post-process volume of your scene, and uh, within that, it's under the Global Illumination tab. Uh, but from here, you can choose the different options available, and in order to enable RTX GI, you simply pick Plugin, and there you go. You'll have RTX GI working via the plugin. So how do we create a GI volume from scratch? Well, let's go ahead and take our sample scene here and I'll select the, the DDGI volume that's already placed and delete it. So as you can see, even though the RTX GI plugin is active, I don't have uh, GI enabled until I place down a volume. Uh, in order to do that, uh, you'll want to go to add an object uh, here and go to the volumes uh, menu and uh, select RTX GI DDGI volume, and that'll put one in your scene. Now you'll notice uh, as I drag it in and uh, scale it up into the scene, GI is being generated wherever this volume is. Now very simply, if I, if I want to have it um, just cover the space like I did before, uh, I know that uh, if I set the size and scale from here, make it approximately um, uh, what I'm looking for. And in general, when it comes to probe spacing, uh, you'll get the most out of it if, if your probes are about equidescent from each other and not too compact to each other. Usually, you know, we like to see probes every two to three meters as a starting point. That's usually about all the resolution and space you need. Let's visualize the probes so we can see what we're talking about. You'll notice that by default, a volume is eight by eight by eight number of probes. We'll want to, a good rule of thumb is to increase it to more or less match the dimensions of the, of the volume. So in this case, I, you know, I don't want it, it I could do it a perfect one to one, uh, but that might be uh, a little more dense on the probe count than I need. Uh, certainly nothing wrong with that. It just consumes, you know, more performance and more memory and you can actually make it more efficient than that. So just, just keep that scaled the same. Uh, let's instead set it to six, uh, by 12 by six. 
And you'll see a lot of a lot of times exact positioning doesn't matter, but you you might get a little more benefit out of it by um, slightly nudging the volume just a little bit. And you'll notice that the probes uh, will in, attempt to intelligently reposition themselves and do what they need to do in order to produce good GI. If we go to uh, our content drawer here let's look at um, another test map that comes with the sample project which is GI City. Uh, it's, at a, it's at a much larger scale. Uh, let me visualize the probes on this volume and you'll see that there's a lot of them uh, but this is uh, perfectly okay and uh, right here in the comments of this uh, uh, example you'll see we give you the formula for uh, the maximum number of uh, probes in a volume. Uh, basically, you, you multiply the X, Y, and Z value of uh, probes against each other. And as long as the number is less than 16,384, uh, you're under the limit. And the reason why this limit exists is because uh, uh, there is a, a, a large texture, we call an irradiance texture, being generated for every volume. Um, and since the maximum texture size uh, on Windows uh, for current gen hardware is a 16K texture that gives you the, uh, the maximum number of probes that a volume can have. And of course, if you need more probes, you can always place down more volumes. Um, uh, you know, uh, there are upper bounds to this where, you know, lots of lots of probes and lots and lots of volumes will eventually cause slowdowns, uh, you know, and it comes at a higher memory cost and so forth. But uh, in general, you'll see that um, it scales very well. The probe performance uh, and quality is very high. I want to thank you again for listening to me tell you about the RTX GI plugin today. And go to our NVIDIA developer YouTube channel. You'll see a playlist here, uh, which will uh, give you even more detailed information on how to best set up and make use of RTX GI, including some uh, detailed information on what all the settings do, how to improve your lighting quality, and fine-tune performance and memory. Again, thank you.